can you say it? Rolling. Okay. Hey, great to be back at Daily Impact here with our friends. And, and as you can see, we're joined by a uh, fishbowl. We need to put some goldfish in the fishbowl. So how's the game work? For the here time? we go. First one to five. First one to five. First one to hit five shots in a row. I'll start it out with a bucket. This is the first game I'm playing. But it's not five in a row. No. It's no. Just, so one, two, three. Here we go. I think we got it. That's oh. one. Oh. Pressure's on. Ah! And he takes the lead. A little short. Whoa! 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 <laughs> like this far off. For those of you that can't see, there is a fishbowl over there at the grade school gym. I need a backboard. I need a backboard. Uh, the lead. Oh, Come on. A three to two. All right. The pressure's mounting for me. Four. Oh, Whoa. That was there. That was there. That was there. That was there. <laughs> I'm going to keep hitting that spot. <laughs> oh, I, I think the turtle flinched on that one. <laughs> Coming in hot. Oh. Three to three. Oh, oh and that he one, takes the lead. That one, there there we go. Oh, there we that go. one came off the hand. I'm on the board. Four. Four. Oh! Stop. That was I big. Game. game two. Hold on, let me dig around and get a good guy. <laughs> oh! oh! Finished the round. Come on, man. Three. Oh my goodness! Three. So what I we tied. Who's three taking second? Three. three to three. You're playing for second. Okay, so let's go. Let's go. Playing for second. Oh, the turtle's on it. Oh! There it is. That's There's four. 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 Five. Five. Oh, oh, pressure's on. I didn't finish. My pressure's mom. on. One right. shot. Oh! I need a backboard. <laughs> Beautiful. Good stuff. There are goldfish all over this room. I'm gonna get him back to my classroom soon after this is over. All right, get him a proper meal. Yeah, let's see if, uh, they, see if they can go. concentrate. I think we stuff. can do the show with the fish there. It's not too distracting. I'm, I'm gonna try not to bring this win up. Oh, after the show. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be distracting for the viewers, but I'm distracted. Yeah, I was trying to get that goldfish. <laughs> oh, there, oh, there he goes. goes. He got one. He <laughs> <laughs> rode it up to the top. Yeah. This is fast for breakfast. <laughs> I can't. Tear away. No. <laughs> okay. Ephesians chapter 6. Is that where we're at? Ephesians 6. Let's just go straight to the next verse. And uh, verse 15. Talking about the armor of God. Talking about battle. Mm -hmm. Preparation. Piece by piece. Put on the whole armor of God. And uh, how it's available. I loved it when you brought out that, that point. The armor is available. We need to take it on for ourselves. But let's look at verse 15. We see another piece of armor here. It says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So as we're putting on and assembling this armor, um, we, get, we get eventually to our feet, and they're shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What do you see there? Well, I, I open to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. And then it goes on to say, uh, For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day. So this declaring of the gospel there, it's just, just to make sure everybody is on the same page here. The gospel there is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, it's not some vague ideology. Right. It's it's not tied to some church. It's not some man's message. The, the gospel is declared and defined in the Bible. It's declared as a death, burial, resurrection. Yeah. I like Romans chapter 1, yeah. where the Bible says in verse number 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So... This gospel is the power of God. So this, this death, burial, and resurrection, it is belief in the gospel that saves a man's soul. It, it's not church membership. It's not being a Baptist or being non-denominational or Catholic. Or, it is the gospel is the power of God on the salvation. And it's something we shouldn't be ashamed of. And so when we look at Ephesians chapter number 6, and we see that, that our feet, 
uh, should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, then we understand that, that what it's saying is everywhere we go, mm -hmm. we're carrying it, the gospel. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you see with, there? With, with our feet, I mean, what, what comes to my mind is you don't put on your shoes unless you're going somewhere. And this, this gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, it's, it's supposed to be going somewhere. We're supposed to be advancing with yeah. that, that gospel. Again, you don't put on your you don't put on your shoes unless you're going somewhere. So I've not had my shoes on a whole lot during this whole <laughs> Corona. <laughs> I mean, my shoes come off about 11.30 in the morning. Yeah. And we put yeah. Back on. But yeah, you're right. We need to be, our feet need to be ready to, to take, to go, to, to advance the gospel. Yeah. You know, I love the word advance. You know, I, I'll say this, but when, when, when John was little, um, if I was going somewhere, I had, to, I had to go someplace to put my shoes on and not let him see. Because as a little kid, he wanted to get out of the house, and at three years of age, he was smart enough to know if I'm putting my shoes on, I'm going somewhere. And he didn't know where I was going, but he wanted to go. So, yeah. and normally his mom wanted him to go too. Yeah. Yeah. I love the word advance because as you as you study and read the, this passage, this is the first time that we see the soldier moving forward. You know, everything else is look, protect yourself. And, and get this breastplate on and your loins girt with truth and you see words like you know stand and having done all the stand and kind of this idea of the enemy is attacking and so you you be prepared but we get to verse 15 and we see a shift it's now it's it's your time to move it's your time to attack it's your time to advance and here's how you're going to do it with the gospel you know, that's, that's, it's almost like that's our weapon. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know we have a sword, but, but the gospel of peace is, uh, is how we advance, mm -hmm. what we advance with. That is the message. And, um, you know, I think of a, of a lot of good people that I have known that have been carrying the gospel for years. Some of them now, I can think of names who would sit in our auditorium or sit up on the platform who are now in heaven, but it was their job to advance it at that time. Yeah. And now it's our job. And now it's our job. The, the gospel work is always advancing. So you and I were talking a little bit earlier about um, the book of Acts. An interesting thing about the book of Acts, there's no ending to it. It just trails off. You know, of course, Acts is the, the book of the gospel at work. You see yeah. the church advancing the gospel, taking city by city, you know, and, and Christianity growing it with the gospel message. And then it just kind of, yeah. there's no, there's no uh, official close. Yeah, so he's just kind of sitting at his house. He's teaching people. And, yeah. And then it, you, you would think it'd be, it would end with a death. Yeah, well, you read, any, you read almost every other book in the New Testament, and yeah. there's a closing. Yeah. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith. Faith, grace be with them all that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, there's an ending to all these books, but you get to Acts, and it's like, and he taught the Bible, and see you later. You know? yeah, <laughs> because, right. But the reason is because it's not over. Yeah. The book of Acts is not over. Mm -hmm. The gospel work is still advancing still should be advancing. So, Brother Woosley, I, I think of like a basketball game, and I think about movement. Mm -hmm. And you know as a coach, when the ball dies, yeah. you know, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Right. No, certainly need to keep the ball moving. And, you know, it, it's funny if, um, you know, I think of a couple of players, and I won't mention their name, but sometimes a guy would get a rebound. And if you understand basketball a little bit, you understand that we want that outlet pass to go from the rebound up the floor. And every once in a while, you know, we would have a guard that steps back mm -hmm. and he wants to take that ball backwards and then get everything set up. And, and most of the time, most of the time, that is not what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that guard should be moving up the floor, yeah. looking for that ball to get advanced mm -hmm. up the floor because if it's not, you're losing opportunities. Yeah. There's opportunities that you're missing if that ball's not constantly advanced. By the way, we want to put pressure on the enemy. Yeah. I mean, we say one of our one of our things that we think about uh, as a team is we want to be aggressive and not angry. But the point is being aggressive. We mm -hmm. always put the pressure on the other team. Mm -hmm. And by pushing the ball up the floor, by advancing the ball, you just, there may be an opportunity up there you can take advantage of. So, so, so how do we put the pressure on the enemy? Yeah. You know? that, that word preparations mm -hmm. stood, stood out to me because we need to be ready before before that time comes. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think of uh, 1 Peter 3, 15, it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give, an, to give an answer to any man that asketh the reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. So before we go and share the gospel with someone, we have to know it ourselves. That faith has to be ours before we before we go, right? So there's a preparation there, involved. Yeah, you got to be you know, ready. And probably the most overlooked word in in the passage, it's certainly in the verse, is the preparation. Mm -hmm. You know, the gospel of peace. Yeah. Are you prepared? Just the and that that adage: if you're failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. And the guy that wrote that, God wrote it, but God used Peter to write it. Certainly as he was writing that, he was going to recognize, he was recognizing as he was writing it, mm -hmm. boy, I'm going to get, I'm going to get criticized for this, because who is known in the Bible for not being ready to give an answer? Mm -hmm. it, it, it was Peter. Mm -hmm. And still, one of the most powerful witnesses in all of Scripture is the Apostle Peter. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just because I failed in the past at being ready to give an answer, boy, I want to be, I want to be ready now. Yeah. And Peter can teach us he wasn't always ready, uh, but at that moment when he was writing First Peter, he was probably the premier witness in the world, well, him and Apostle Paul. So, yeah. so being ready and prepared to give an what, answer. What, what a great time to prepare right now as you're listening to this. You know, without a whole lot of go, a whole lot going on, you know, the, the best time is to be in the gym and to really get some practice in when no one else is there. Yeah. And you can really work on your craft. Man, right now to, to dig into God's word, to understand what you believe, why you believe it, that preparing time, man, this is this is as good a time as any. So I see an attitude that comes with being prepared. We, we can't be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Part of being prepared is being bold. Right. You know, we have to know what we're talking about. So we have to know the gospel. We have to be able to convey and communicate the gospel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was reading also, and, and I think this is an interesting point to pull out, they said that the Roman soldiers would put a, uh, they called it a hob, but in our terms, we would call it cleats. They would have something on the bottom of their shoe that anchored them when they fought, gave them good footing, sure footing. And, and here, the Bible says that our anchor, our foundation, is the gospel. Amen. You know, so, so many of us, we get, we get tied to a church. We get, we get tied to even a school, a family, a, uh, a heritage, a tradition, a preacher. I mean, it goes on and on. But that's not the anchor for any of these things. For, for our fight, we're going to be anchored in one simple truth, and that is the death, burial, resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's our message. That's our anchor. That's our power. And uh, that's how we win. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And uh, those gates are there for protection. So that means the church is assaulting. And we have a promise, not just that we can stand, but that we can be victorious. But it's all related to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And what's our relationship with the gospel? So, so wrapping it up, John, what, what are some practical things that you would tell young people right now, you know, listening to this, mm -hmm. in terms of their relationship to the gospel? Give us, give us one thing. Yeah, I mean, my challenge would be just to make sure that you're ready, you know, so when, you know, things do open back up, when we are able to, to knock on a door, to be at a team soul winning, that you can, with confidence, like he was saying, okay. share that that gospel so that we can advance. Mm -hmm. yeah. my, my challenge would be, you know, to just think, what are you carrying? Mm -hmm. You know, everywhere you walk, you ought to be carrying the gospel. Mm -hmm. And that challenges me. Yeah. You know, and I think out of what was said, you just made a statement. You just asked the question, what is your relationship with the gospel? And I think as a Christian, somebody who, who you know, loves our school, loves our church and all that, uh, what is my personal relationship with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ? How prepared am I? How ready am I to give an answer uh, to that next person that the Holy Spirit, you know, gives me that spiritual impulse that, hey, you need to share the gospel with him? So just the idea of my relationship with the gospel and being what it should be is challenging when I look at part that part of um, the armor of God. When you strip it all down, you know, it boils down to the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about like missionaries and some things that work in America don't work in India and cultures, and, and but the gospel is bigger than all of it. And the gospel works everywhere it goes, you know. And, uh, and 
I love it. So young people, we challenge you today to have a relationship with the gospel that is real, where you're prepared, where you're bold about it, where you realize that, that if you're going to win, mm -hmm. if you're going to win, okay, you'll win by carrying the message of the gospel everywhere you go. Love you guys. Have a good day.